I'd like to welcome everybody to my presentation, Slinging Hash, the hashing functions available in SAS. And I'm Rick Langston, and I'm happy to be here today uh, to tell you about these functions. I'm going to first give you a quick introduction to the concept of hashing before I tell you about the functions. Hashing techniques take a message, a stream of data, a text stream, whatever it may be, any kind of data of any kind of length. They then perform computations and create what is known as a digest, uh, reducing it down to a small size. Uh, various hashing techniques have included the, the legacy cyclical redundancy check CRC, which creates a four-byte digest. Uh, been around for a long time, but not terribly secure. MD5 came along a little bit later. It creates an eight-byte digest. Then SHA-256 seems to be somewhat the standard today, and it's a 32-byte digest. There are various variants of SHA, like SHA-1, SHA-384, and SHA-512, but 256 is the one most people tend to use these days. There's a Another component called HMAC, which takes an additional secret key as part of the computation, and, and it's a public domain algorithm. But I want to point out that hashing is not encryption. Don't think of it in any way as encryption, because typically with encryption, you are expecting to create a stream that you can turn around and then decrypt in some fashion and get back to the original stream, the original message. But, but hashing does not work that way. It is not reversible. It's intended just just to create a hash that you may then compare with another hash later on. So the original hashing functions that have been available in SAS for a number of years are these. There's MD5 and SHA-256 that I spoke about, and a, a pairing, a, a group of, of functions, the CRC functions, one would just take a message and give back a CRC. The other did what is called a piecemeal process, and I'm going to explain more about that with the new type of hashing functions. So these are the ones that existed before, and, and they still do exist. So here are the new functions that are available in SAS, and this is as of 9.4 M6, so you'll want to check your Amper Sys V long or look at the top of your log to see what version of SAS you have in case you're not certain. But that's the version you have to be at in order to use these functions. So we see hashing and hashing HMAC, and we see the piecemeal set of init and part and term, and then we see functions that can use files. And I'm going to explain about each one of those in these three sets. So these are all new, not available until 9.4 and 6 but certainly available then. Here's a very simple example of use. This is where we're trying several of the methods, and we just have a loop. And by the way, you can use character strings in a, in a do, as you see here. And then it will try the various methods given, and it will use the same message, and we will see the resulting digest. The digest comes out, as we see here, there are four different hashes, all four are completely different because there are different numbers of characters, different types of algorithms being used, but all of those uh, hashes are computed by the, hash, the same hashing function instead of separate functions. Another thing to point out is it's all in hex. All of these digests are using hex characters. This is not, notice I did not say dollar hex, I just put out the result uh, of the digests, and those all come out in hex, and that's a design consideration that I came up with when implementing these functions so that you don't run into any binary data issues. Suppose you want to hash something that's quite large, and that may be very typical. You may have a, an arbitrarily large stream. In this particular case, let's say we're dealing with a stream of one million Xs, one million lowercase Xs. And something we can do is use a varchar. And many of you may be longtime SAS users, but you don't know what a varchar is. A varchar is a varying length character string, and that concept was introduced in 9.4 M5 of the SAS system. And it, is, it hasn't been well publicized, partly because you cannot currently save varchars into a SAS data set. Because you can't persist them, they may be of more limited use. But in this particular case, a varchar can be very useful. So I wanted to show you an example using varchar here. So we have the x1m variable set equal to a single character of x. And then we can use the repeat function on it, and the repeat function does know about varchars. So in this case, the repeat function will give us back 
a stream of one million lowercase x's into the variable x1m. We can then run the hashing function, which also can deal with bar chars. We can tell it we want to use the SHA-256 method, and we give it the stream of one million x's, and we get back our result. We already know the digest of what it's supposed to be, so we have set our digest variable equal to that and to see whether or not they match. I also have taken this opportunity to use the IFC function, which is very handy, which you can give it a condition as the first argument and give it a character string if the, if the condition is true, another character string if it is not true. So when we run this, we will see that status is matched. So indeed, it did work. So you could build your message completely with a varchar, but it's got to be all within a single data step in which you do so because you can't save the varchar to a SAS data set. But this is a very handy uh, method to use if it's available to you. When I say if it's available to you, it certainly would be because these functions are available in 9.4.m6 and bar charts came along in 9.4.m5, but you may be in a context where you cannot use bar charts for whatever reason. If you need to work with the message in a piecemeal fashion because it's too long, whatever the reason may be, we can use this pairing of functions. The hashing init is called. You give it the method, and it gives you back this handle. That is simply a numeric value that will not be meaningful to you, but it's very meaningful to these functions. Then we, have, we are looping through the 1 million characters uh, by an iteration of 10,000. So we go 10,000 characters at a time and pass in repeat to generate the 10,000 Xs and we run hashing part with that handle, and it, it, it just contributes to the computation of the final digest. And it, you can do this as much as you need, as many times as you need, and when you've gotten a complete message, you then call hashing term, again with that handle, and it will give you back the final digest. So the digest is the same one we've used in previous examples, and we come up with status matched. So you, if you needed to work with it this way, those functions are perfectly available to you. So if, if Varchar isn't going to work for you or, or you don't wish to use it, whatever the reason, these piecemeal functions are available to you. Now what if instead the, the data is in a file? And indeed, very often people are using things like MD5, SHA-256 on a set of files to confirm that the files contain exactly what they're supposed to, especially if you're doing transfer or you're doing an install. You want to make sure that the data was preserved correctly. You could then use a file. So say we have this file of 1 million Xs, and it's an x1m.txt is the name of our file. We can run the hashing file function. Again, we should get back the same digest that we got in the other examples, and, and indeed we do. So hashing file is also available, and you can pass the name of a file. There's a couple of caveats that I will cover later on in this presentation about dealing with files. Now, I mentioned HMAC. HMAC is a specialized hashing technique. It, well, it uses all the different hashing methods, but it, but it also introduces what we call a secret key. And there is a public algorithm for HMAC. And you may find, you may be asked to implement something, and it may use HMAC. And I just wanted you to know that HMAC is completely available with the hashing functions as well with the suffix of HMAC. So here we call the hashing HMAC function and give it our secret key and our text, which is the message, and we get a digest back, and then we also can do it in a piecemeal fashion. Here, in this, in this particular case, I do nothing but process a single character at a time, and we want to see if those results come out the same, and indeed, we do get the same digest when we run this way, whether it be just using hashing HMAC or using the piecemeal function. So everything I've showed you about piecemeal works for, for HMAC just as well. Now, what if we want to use a file with HMAC? We can absolutely do that, and we can. And instead, we write our data out to a file using. We wrote my message out to a file, and we use the file ref, 
and then we use hashing HMAC file. Now, there are a couple of differences than what we had seen before, and this is just to show you uh, another approach. In the, in the previous slides, we used a path name, the actual name of the file, but here we are using a file ref as our argument. Now, a file ref is permitted, but you have to add that fourth argument with a value of four. It is a flag that says, this thing is not a path name, this is a file ref, because you could have a file called simply my file, and there would be no way to tell the difference between the two because they're, they're both my file. So the, the, the fourth argument being four indicates this is a file ref. The other thing that I want to point out is that I use recfem equals f l rec l equals 1 when I wrote this out. This is so that I only wrote the exact characters, my blank message, and nothing else. If I had omitted that, we'd have had a carriage return line feed put out as well, and then it wouldn't have been just my message. It would have been my message, carriage return, line feed, which would be a different binary stream, and it would not give us the same result. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in, in a few slides. So the legacy functions that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, there's MD5 and there's SHA-256. Here's an example of using those. They still exist, but as is typical with SAS things, they don't, things don't tend to ever go away So because you've got existing SAS code that you want to continue running. So here we use the MD5 function but we also use the hashing function with the MD5 first argument. Likewise, we do SHA-256, and we do it with hashing. The distinction is that MD5 and SHA-256, as the older legacy functions, return their digest as binary data. The hashing function returns the digest as hex characters, as a character string. So you can see that we have to show MD5 bin and SHA been as using dollar hex instead of just displaying them because they would otherwise come out as garbage on the log and we certainly don't want to see that. This was my decision to have the hashing functions return everything as character strings because you can run into problems with binary data such as a put all or an error message comes out and, and a put all occurs or if you are trying to transfer from one platform to another where there's a different encoding, and, and if, or if you're trying to use var chars, they can have real problems with binary. So I chose to make sure everything was in the form of character data so there would be no problem. So we could see, uh, although this slide's a little bit small here, how it got shrunk, we can see that the, the, the resulting digests are the same for MD5 and SHA-256. So I want to give you an example of encoding problems with hashing that you need to be aware of. And so say we have gone to the Wikipedia page for Beyonce, and we uh, want to cut and paste her name, and we want to create this little SAS program, and we are going to be hashing Beyonce, and, and Jay-Z is going to be very upset about that. So we're going to be hashing the character string Beyonce using MD5, and we're going to come up with the resulting hash. This should be quite straightforward. We shouldn't see any issue, and it should work the same no matter where we are. However, if we do that cutting and pasting while we're running University Edition with SAS Studio, we're going to see a different hash than if we were running the Display Manager on Windows and we cut and pasted and ran it. Now, the reason for this is because of what we see in red. The SAS Studio client is running in UTF-8, and the Display Manager is, at least when I was testing it, was running with Windows Latin 1 encoding. And what happens is that accent over the E, the acute accent E, is represented differently in UTF than it is in Latin 1. In UTF-8, it is Charlie 3 Able 9. It's a two-byte value. And in, in Windows Latin 1, it is easy 9. It is a one-byte value. They are different. And if you pass a different message to the hashing technique, it is going to give you a different digest. And this is what happened with us here. If you wanted to avoid this problem, if you think there's any possibility of encoding issues, then what you can do is use KCVT. And what that does is it will do uh, a, a 
transcoding to a different encoding for you. So if you t it will take your text in this case and transcode it to UTF-8 so that we would be guaranteed of having the same message regardless of what encoding we started with. If we're running a UTF-8 encoding case, EVT will have a no-op. It will not exactly a no-op. It will just simply copy. But if we're running in Windows Latin 1, it will know to transcode that to something different. So if there's any possibility that you will have encoding issues, use KCVT to avoid it. Otherwise, you are going to have issues with the hashes not being consistent. Now, I mentioned before about text files and said be careful when you're working with text files. And here is an example of one that could be a problem. If we started out on Windows and we ran this little piece of code where we wrote two records out, record one and record two, and we wrote them as text files. You know, we have not you know, used that rectum equals F, L rec L equals one that I showed before. So they're written out as text files. And then we use the and we use, and there is a typo here. This should be hashing file. I just recognize as I'm presenting this, this should be hashing file. And we pass a file ref of my test. And what the result is that we should get back is this particular digest for those two records. However, if we transferred this file using FTP and we ran it, then I uh, ran it FTP to two Unix and ran it there, we would get a different digest than we got on Windows. And why is that? We would have expected it to be the same. No, it isn't. If we transfer it instead in binary mode, yes, we would get the same result. So why is that? The problem is that with text files on Windows, Windows is going to write out a carriage return line feed, which is hex characters of zero dog, zero able. So on Windows, that we would have the characters record one followed by zero dog, zero able, record two followed by zero dog, zero able. If we FTP the file to Unix, we will only have line feed to zero able. So the, the very same file as far as we're looking at, it looks the same, but it isn't. The zero dog, the carriage return is omitted when you have transferred it in text mode on Unix. Or if you created the file initially on Unix, it would not have that zero dog there. And just like we've seen in previous examples, the binary stream is different, so we're going to have a different digest when we hash it. So you need to be aware of that situation. So now that I've given you some information about these functions, how can you use them as long as you're running 9, 4, and 6? I wanted to make sure you were aware of a couple of things. When a developer such as I was at SAS until I retired, when a developer is writing a set of functions, the developer wants to realize that they will run in multiple types of environments. In, in SAS, there is what's called the multi-vendor architecture environment, the MVA, versus a threaded kernel environment. You, as a SAS user, may not be aware of this. Uh, it just happens for you somewhat behind the scenes. So if you're running the data step, or you're running IML, or you're running functions created with FCMP, you would be running with MVA functions. And likewise, with the macro facility, you would be. However, if you are running in DS2, or if you're running a data step that will run in CAS, you're going to be running with the TK versions of the functions. As a developer, it was my responsibility to ensure that these functions uh, were available for both MVA and TK, and both worked the same and shared code when possible. So you can, you, you can use them without being concerned. The only limitation is that with hashing file, if you are running that in a CAS data step or DS2, you cannot use a file ref because the threaded kernel environment has no concept of a file refs like there is in MVA. Uh, this is a, a minor limitation. I would not recommend the use of the hashing file function in CAS data step anyway due to the architectural nature of running in CAS. I also wanted to point out a couple of very handy websites. If you're doing any kind of work with hashing, you can go to hashemall.com. You can type in whatever you need to hash or upload it as a file, and you can get the hashes for a lot of the methods, all the ones that are the hashing function support plus many others. Very handy site. And if you're wanting to work with HMAC, I can recommend freeformatter.com, where you can enter your secret key and, and the text that you wish to hash with HMAC. So these are two very handy sites that I used as well when I was doing some of the developmental work.
So in conclusion, be aware that in 9.4.m.6, the hashing functions are available and that they use character data, hex character data for their digest being returned. You can work with files, you can work with var chars, and you can process piecemeal as well, as well as HMAC. So all of these functionalities are available to you uh, depending on what kind of specifications you may have. It's been my pleasure to speak to you today. If you want to contact me, here is my email address, and I'll be glad to correspond with you about the subject or others. Thank you very much for your attention.